Hey guys, it's Drew again. Today I want to show off a piece that I've had in my collection for years. And it's an art form that people just don't do anymore, but it was a way that people for decades used to help preserve and remember things within kind of anything. And this one is baseball related. It's super cool and I really want to show it to you. So let's go ahead and check it out. So what I'm talking about is scrapbooking. Scrapbook was something that people would do where they would take articles and pictures and put them together and at the time they would glue them into pages and it was a, it was a way to preserve a story of some kind. Um, sometimes there were personal photos, sometimes there were um, just different articles about a topic and I've seen different scrapbooks from different things but uh, this one is a baseball scrapbook and the person who put it together obviously was a Hall of Fame fan because everything is based around when players got into the Hall of Fame but the articles that they used used and pictures were actually from the playing days of those teams and the reason I have this is years ago I was a Hall of Fame collector where I collected one playing card from every Hall of Famer during their playing days and one of the most difficult people to find was Stan Kovaleski and he played in the teens and the 20s mainly so he started playing after those tobacco cards were out in T206, T205 and all those and he kind of, he retired before the Gowdies came out in 1930s so it was very hard there was a lot of strip cards but I actually was able to find what's called a um, an exhibit card uh, so it's more postcard size and it was glued into a scrapbook and so I purchased the scrapbook it actually was very inexpensive for the book itself it cost more to ship it than it did to get it probably twenty dollars all in and I really got it just for the card I did take the card out and unfortunately I don't own the card anymore uh, because I had sold off a, pre a chunk of pre-war years ago to help fund a gift for my wife which I was more than happy to do but I still have the scrapbook and I was really surprised I think the treasure was not the card it's the book itself so here's the scrapbook and as you can see it's rather large um, it was made to be a scrapbook and you can see there is a lot of pages in here and they are articles pictures magazine um, from different people so I'm gonna take some time and just flip through it and talk about uh, different um, just the, the way that they're in there the different things uh, some of these articles go back into the 20s and it was put together and finished probably mid 70s I think 1975 is the most recent uh, article or picture that was in there, but it's a lot of fun to look through so I wanted to share it with you So let's go check it out So here's the scrapbook that I was referring to and it's just a ton of fun to look through and as you can see The person who put it together was a Hall of Fame collector So it talks about the Hall of Fame just in the inside cover as a, as a museum and a place for it to be enshrined but what they did was, as players would be inducted, they would put together uh, just a little scrapbook, a few pages, sometimes more than others, of the person and their career. And <clears throat> so it starts out with Roy Campanella when he was inducted in 1969. But they've got photographs that go way back during his career. And what I love, and this is the only page that's got that kind of damage on it, but... Um, what I love is the fact that it's really pieced together well. I mean, they, they took time to, to actually measure and cut. All the tops and the bottoms of the pages are all perfectly even, so there's no overhang. Um, they got articles from magazines, from uh, newspapers, uh, and they date throughout the player's career as well as post-career. Uh, you've got, uh, see, this one's from 1956, so it talks about Campanella and uh, shows this great picture in here. Um, it was so familiar from their Bow his Bowman card that we all love. Uh, from 1958 so this is right after his accident it goes through an article talking about some of the struggles he dealt with so it's a really it's a good read it gives a good historical look playing uh, back during what uh, what people fans and and, and players went through and, and just to read at the time you know we have the opportunity to look back and we see the entire picture afterwards but this is as everything unfolded this is a great picture here at Jackie Robinson's funeral with Rachel Robinson as well as Roy Campanella uh, from the early 70s. It really makes me wonder, like, did they, uh, did they have, like, you know, file folders full of articles and pictures of different players? Or did they have, like, stacks and boxes of newspapers and magazines up in their attic and they would dig through to look through? I don't really know, um, but it's just really interesting to see. So this is going into Stan Musial's career, and I think this is the only color photography, but this is from 1963, uh, at the end of his career, talking about uh, how he was going to be a Hall of Famer, and um, just different uh, articles, pictures. Uh, <clears throat> this goes all the way back to 1943. 
so 20 years early, and this talks about how Musil is becoming um, the, the legend that he, that he eventually was. Um, great pictures of, of teammates and, and um, of the player themselves, him and Willie Mays together. Uh, some personal articles, things about families and wives, kids, and and how they how they dealt with different things, the pressures of being a um, a ball player in the time, and, and really super celebrity. Uh, this one talks about him and his wife, and and different other uh, aspects of it. Um, <clears throat> as we could continue to go through, uh, this is where we get to the stuff talks about Stan Kowalewski, how he went in, and and this is actually where that that card that I took out was from uh, also and it's, there's not much on Kovaleski but there's more on Wade Hoyt uh, who also went to the Hall of Fame back then and now you've got really old pictures this this one's from 1928 this picture talking about Wade Hoyt going out on the mound today and you know you see Babe Ruth here in the same photograph as the team <clears throat> um, there's an article in here by Grantland Rice who is a you know one of the original great journalists of the times from back in the 20s to, uh, covering a Yankees game now you jump up to Lou Boudreau and what he did, um, just different things. It talks about him as a player. It talks about him as a coach and a manager. Uh, when I got the book, this part was actually missing, and it's always made me curious. What what was there? You know, what was taken out of the book before it was sold to me? And it makes me wonder with the one card that I took out, was there another card or a series of card, uh, especially uh, you know during the pages of Wade Hoyt? So I don't know. Maybe it was something else in there. Uh, this one's from 1927, and then it jumps up to pictures of the plaques uh, of after they're in the Hall of Fame. And it goes back and forth. There's the article on Grant, uh, from Grantland Rice that I referred to. Um, this one talks about uh, Rogers Hornsby is in there, uh, it just mentioned. So, again, uh, just a great uh, picture looking back, these amazing photographs, these amazing articles all put together. Uh, now we jump up into Satchel Page, and I really like this section. Uh, it's going to talk about that, <clears throat> a little bit about the Giants here. Oh, I'm sorry, not Satchel Page yet, but uh, from 1925, Chick Hafey. Um, yeah, there's all the Chick Hafey stuff. 1925, again. Uh, <clears throat> 1926. Um, and uh, this talks about Chick Hafey, and he passes away. Now we get up into the Satchel Page stuff. And uh, I think it's great that in, in this... On this page, you've got this small picture of Roy Campanella talking about Satchel Page, but they included that picture, which is on his baseball card, and then you've got this classic photograph right next to it. And, of course, the person who put this together, they didn't know. They were just finding things that fit in the right spaces, but they just did a fantastic job of showing it. Love this article titled Methuselah on the Mound, talking about how great was Satchel Page for real. Uh, one little article about Josh Gibson talking about him when he was enshrined um, after he had passed away. In the early 70s. Um, then we get into, I think it's Yogi Berra, yeah. And there's a lot of Yogi Berra, a lot of stuff with him on the Mets, a lot of him becoming a coach and a manager, but there are some articles of Berra <clears throat> from back when he was on the Yankees. Um, let's see, find one here. <sighs> Great picture, really young Yogi Berra. Um, yeah, 1951. This talks about Berra and, and him becoming the star uh, of the Yankees or one of the stars. So this is. Uh, November 1951. This is after the World Series win, but before Mickey Mantle was Mickey Mantle. And uh, it just talks about Yogi Berra with his family, his young family at the time. Um, really great pictures, great articles as MVPs. Um, let's see, and then we get up. There's one with Casey Stengel. It's a great picture of him. Um, and then it talks about how he becomes a, the Mets manager. Um, there's a, a an article in here. Oh, I like this one. This is uh, mid World Series of 1969. So this is right before they, uh, right before they won the World Series, but in the middle of it all. Um, then you've got different things. I think there's a picture of Mantle in here, somewhere. Um, but just a lot of good stuff. Um, yeah, this is when he becomes the manager of the Mets. And then it goes on to Lefty Gomez, some stuff on Lefty Gomez. Now, what I find interesting is by the time we get to here, uh, maybe they were tired, maybe they didn't have enough articles, but you can see blank page, you can see more gaps. They didn't piece it together quite as well. Um, but, uh, but still, um, a lot of uh, time and effort put into this. Then you've got these great pictures of Sandy Koufax, and we go into this whole Sandy Koufax thing, and the fact that they took this picture, which you can see right here, there's a scene where it was... Uh, across a crease. I don't know if that was in a magazine or in a newspaper, but they pieced it together to give the full picture. And then, of course, there's the same uh, image over there of the same photo. 
Um, great Sandy Koufax articles talking about him. There's one where he threw his perfect game uh, in 1965. Um, just how dominant he was, and then when he retired and what he was going to do, uh, this you know how the world was stunned. You know he retired at such a young age. He was only 30 years old when he retired, and then five years later enshrined in Cooperstown, making him the youngest enshrinee player in Cooperstown, which I'm sure most of you know. But he was only 35 when he went to the Hall of Fame, uh, which is kind of crazy to think about. But it was a great picture of him and Whitey Ford together. Um, <clears throat> so. Just a lot of fun to flip through it. To read these articles, I like to sit down every once in a while and do that and just have a good time doing it, um, just reliving of what they went through and even the care that they put in in the back cover to you know show some stuff from Cooperstown itself. So uh, I really appreciate you guys coming along. I hope you enjoyed looking at this. I don't know how many people have scrapbooks. This is the only one I've come across that's this detailed. I wish I had more. Uh, it really shows a great synopsis of baseball of different things going on for so many years, so many decades, uh, and it's just a, a great way to flip through and see the pastime through the eyes of the uh, journalist at the time. This is what players and fans would, would read about um, at the time the players were playing. So I hope you enjoyed the journey. I hope you enjoyed looking at it. Uh, let me know what you think. If there's anything that you saw that was interesting, uh, let me know in the comments. But I appreciate you all your time. Until next time, you guys be good.